friends, it's Roderick Martez back again with another video. If this is your first time on my channel, make sure you guys hit that big red subscribe button. Also like this video because that's the most important thing you can do. Comment what you think below after the duration of this video and then make sure you hit the bell so you guys know whenever I post a video. These two people next to me are very important. This is my Sans Yamani and this is my... <laughs> <laughs> my friend, <laughs> Javier. Um, if you haven't read the title, this video is about being a member of the LGBT community in a MPHC organization. Like I said before, otherwise known as a Black Greek letter organization, BGLO, BGLO, all of that. So yeah, here we go, let's get into it. So being a prominent member of my organization and being openly bisexual, everybody would always ask me, how was my experience? Um, everybody would ask, what was it like joining my organization? What was it like expressing interest? So today we're going to unpack that. First we'll be talking about how I was expressing interest as a member of the LGBT community and giving you all three of our personal stories. The same for how it was when we were joining the organizations after we had been accepted as candidates. And then the third part is going to be what it's like being in the organization as a member of the LGBT community. After we unpack those three things we're going to be talking about how we personally feel that we've changed our organizations and then second we're going to talk about what it looks like being trailblazers in our organizations and how do we look for members who are like us or how do we help those members attain what we have. So as you guys know, my name is Roderick Martez and I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I've been in my fraternity for three years. I crossed at Central Michigan University at the Road Delta chapter in fall 16. Go ahead, Sans. Hey, what's up, y'all? My name's Yumani. Um, I'm a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. I crossed at Michigan State University at the Gamma Omega chapter. Um, I'm fall 2016, like Roderick, and yeah. My name is Javier Wilson. I'm a part of Five Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, the Delta Kappa chapter at Michigan State University. I am a Trey and Spring 19. A baby. A Neo. A baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. I don't want to go first. Um, um, okay, so the first topic is expressing interest being gay. And for me, it wasn't that bad. One of my profiles identifies as being gay. So I just talked to him and got to know him, but also got to know my chapter and still got to know the history of the organization and the chapter just to make sure that I wanted to be a part of this. Um, it was pretty simple for me. I made sure that my morals and beliefs aligned with the organization. I could see myself not only a part of the organization as a whole, but also the chapter. And that part is really important because I think people fall in love with the org, but they don't always be a, are always able to see themselves with the chapter. So yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. So I guess I'll tell my story next. Um, <clears throat> I identify as damn. <coughs> damn. Right? <laughs> so I'll tell my story next. I identify as a lesbian, but I'm also a masculine presenting woman, so that's good. Um, and I never saw any members in my chapter that looked like me per se. Um, I mean, I can't really speak on anybody else's like sexual orientation, but from what I had seen, everybody up in there was straight, which is cool. That's fine, good for y'all. Um, <laughs> and Again, I was mas masculine presenting, so I was always really nervous about approaching, like, joining an organization like this because I knew that I wanted to join a sorority, kind of. Like, I was interested in sorority life. I didn't know that much about it, but when I saw SG Row, I was like, wow, this is the organization for me. Like, I don't care what anybody says. They kind of sold me at, like, the blue and gold balloons. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, um, I don't think it was too difficult for me to express interest, but I do feel like because I didn't fit those archaic standards of beauty. Sometimes I felt like I was always overcompensating because I was a stud and because, well, I'm still a stud, but because I'm a stud and because I'm gay, I felt like I had to have like perfect grades, heavy community service hours. I had to come to every event like super early. I had to have like a thorough reason for why I wanted to be at SG Row, which all of those things are really important, but I don't think those things are necessary. Like there's no, you don't have to overcompensate if you're in the community and you want to join this community. And so now Never feel like you have to do the most to get don't don't feel like you have to do the most to take off some of the attention mm -hmm. um, that your gayness may like provoke so I guess we'll go to me mine wasn't as interesting as theirs um, during the time that I was expressing interest within my organization I was still DL <laughs> um, so like I said I was DL for about five years and at that point in time I had a girlfriend and everything so I didn't even 
for me, I thought it was a joke. Like I didn't even understand or begin to understand that me liking guys was a real thing. So I, this part of the conversation really isn't too valid for me. Um, I have more instances of how I felt while I was joining. So yeah. Okay, so our next topic is about what it was like for us when we were coming into the organization. So in order to join an NPHC fraternity or sorority, everyone has like a formal membership intake process. And so we're gonna tell y'all a little bit about that, not the specifics, but just what it was like for us. And I'll start. So again, um, I joined a sorority because that's all I can join. No, I'm <laughs> um, so I joined a sorority and there are a lot well, of- could be a Sigma. I, I am a Sigma, I'm a Sigma woman, next. <laughs> <laughs> Next, because they, because they play too damn much. Five, 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 okay. Next, next, next. We don't have to get into that. Anyway, love like I was first. saying, love you too. Like I was saying, so for me, as a masculine presenting woman joining a sorority, there are a lot of old rituals that I needed to perform in order to gain admittance into the organization. And sometimes the uniform involved clothing that I wasn't always comfortable wearing. Not saying that clothing choice should like deter you from pursuing your passions, but I'm sure y'all have seen this on the gram. Like once you get inducted, you get inducted in a dress. Everybody gets inducted in a dress. And we, to this day, we still have like certain garments or certain badges that we cannot wear unless we wear a skirt or a badge and so I'm sorry unless we wear a skirt or a dress and so it's very hard for me to know that there are pieces of my SG row uniform that I will for the most part not be eligible to wear because I'm not putting on no dress or no skirt next question um, and I even think for certain like rituals once you've come into the organization you are still required to wear a skirt or, or a dress like for formal induction so I have had to keep putting on skirts and dresses and continue to sort of be just out of my comfort zone in order to bring someone else into my sorority. But I think that just kind of attests to how dedicated I am. Um, yeah. So for me, again, like I was saying, I was, I was still DL, but in the back of my mind, I knew that I liked boys. And I think that when you're joining an organization, you start to think about what's accepted of you when you're doing this. You start to look at how everybody else is and you sometimes try and mimic the persona that you think that your organization has which can be toxic if you're trying to be yourself so in a way i feel like while i was joining the organization i was kind of lying to myself i was trying to be something that i wasn't and i feel like most of my adolescence was me lying to myself because in the back of my head from the time that i was about 15 or 16 i knew that i would liked boys i just never wanted to address that so when it came to joining a fraternity I didn't I didn't address it so there would be times when people would make uh, jokes pertaining to the LGBT community and I would say nothing and looking back at it now it's just like wow I was really a bitch because <laughs> I I should have been there. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that because <laughs> I should have I, <laughs> I should have been defending myself I should have been defending my people but I knew that it was wrong and I knew that I wasn't standing up for something that I believed in and this whole process of me joining my organization, working my way up to the top of my organization um, in a hierarchy standpoint was just this whole time I've found myself. So joining my organization, being a part of my organization, it's been a great experience for me. Um, I've been able to find who I was and then take pride in who I was while being a member of Alpha Phi. Okay, so for me, I went through hell to get out of the closet, so I wasn't going back into that closet for anyone. And that's um, on me. <laughs> yeah, so my chapter and my organization was very aware of my sexuality. It didn't cause an issue for me personally. Um, if you are interested in the D9 organization and you do identify as LGBTQ, don't change yourself for letters at all. You know, if you need to change yourself for letters, letters aren't for you. Um, just stay true to yourself and know why you want those letters and if you can keep those two things then nothing can stop you honestly did you watch my NPHC video? You said, <laughs> <laughs> hold on guys no, he said the same exact thing I said well, you gotta good. Know that why. means that we're learning and we're teaching and we're doing a damn good job Period. if I can also like I don't know what Pretty piggyback bad. on that. Mm -hmm. I hate saying that. But if I could also like piggyback on that, I would say we need you. 
So don't feel like you have to hide in anybody's closet. We are growing. There are way more LGBTQ identifying individuals in NPAC, even since I've came in and I'm only three in the game. And so we need you to embrace yourself entirely because when you have a strong sense of self, you are a better recruiter. You're a better person. You're a better program developer. You're just a better soror or brother, period, when you know who you are and no one can take that from you. Sign up. She encouraged me. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Yes. Do you boo, but yeah, we need you so get your ass up and if you really are like dedicated to being in an organization I'm not saying just hop on anybody's organization because girl next but like embrace that you're Part of two communities or that you represent the intersectionality of identity because we need you And just to piggyback off that because I didn't say this in my um, first MPHC video These organizations need you more than you need them <laughs> Um, gonna, if there's no members, <laughs> then the bills no aren't getting paid. <laughs> the organization no is not happening, and I would. They don't tell you that. I hate to say this because this is. I feel like it's gonna like blow the cap off of everything. But the funny thing about it is, being in my organization and working my way up through leadership, no shade to nobody. In every single organization, a lot of the people who are in leadership are members of the LGBT community are scared of it themselves and it's just a lot of self-hatred so I feel like our organizations like innately breed self-hatred and it, it takes somebody who's from our generation and somebody who's strong within themselves and their beliefs to change that so yeah. yeah somebody has to be the catalyst for change so maybe it's you for your hopefully chapter or or no shade though or I mean if oh. you're already Greek <laughs> and like you're in the closet like mm -hmm. who I'm not, and I'm not the type of person to push anybody out of the closet because I didn't have the luxury of coming out. Like, I was out it. Somebody wrote my narrative for me, you know what I'm saying? But I will say this, living in my truth has been better than any, than every single day I spent pretending to be someone that I just wasn't. Um, and exactly. luckily, I came out right before I joined Sigma, so Sigma only knows me, Sigma Gamma Rho, because we have petty people up in here. <laughs> so Sigma Gamma Rho only knows me as a stud. They didn't know me in the closet. You know, I was expressing, I was expressing interest when I was still in the closet so I became an SG row um, right after I like came out you know what I'm saying and so they kind of only know me as like this agent this um, agent of change and I'm thankful for that because I think it made me a better poodle period, period. okay so I'm gonna start it off um, with how it is now I came out when I was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha I came out this February actually on February 5th um, while I when I came out just to give you a little background about my um, my tenure as an alpha or my time being an alpha, my first the first leadership position that I held within my organization was that of the assistant district director, which in layman's terms is the president of undergraduate alpha in Michigan. I then became that the next year, and then I became the assistant regional vice president for the whole region of alpha. At this point, being elected, I was not out. Um, there were some people in my organization that knew, but I wasn't out. I decided to come out in February in the middle of my term and I think the fact that I was so high up in Alpha because as an assistant regional vice president I literally held the highest position that a college brother could hold, me being the highest ranking college brother in my region, it was almost as if nobody wanted to say anything directly to me. Um, when I came out I heard rumbles of people saying stuff like somebody was like this person said this and this person said that but nobody in their right mind would say it to my face because I've never been quiet about my feelings and my beliefs um, when I came out that was a point of power and that was a point of just self-realization and a sense of respect that I have for myself and my individuality that if anybody said anything to me I would I don't want to say that I would read them down but <laughs> you know you would. <laughs> There was nothing for anybody to say because I was being myself and you guys had elected me to be this person in this organization that my sexuality shouldn't have anything to do with anything besides the work that I'm putting in. So at that point in my life, I didn't really care too much about what anybody had to say. Um, nobody gave me a hard time. I feel as though they didn't, if they wanted to give me a hard time, they wouldn't have known what to say mm -hmm. because they wouldn't have, they I don't know if they were scared of my reaction or what it may be, but nobody ever said anything negative, my, negative to my face. So I didn't have to deal with that. Um, after I came out, people 
not didn't necessarily treat me different at all i got a lot of respect i was really supported especially among my chapter and within my district people all across michigan and every single organization supported me mm. i came out via instagram so i came out when i was um having an internship at aflv which is the largest um largest greek fraternity and sorority conference in the united states of america and i held an internship there so when i did it it was also like wow, I, I'm literally in this powerful ass place and a high ranking member of my organization. There wasn't anything for anybody to say. So yeah, that would, I mean, that was just my coming out experience in Greek life. Um, I got a lot of support from my chapter and I feel like even though I'm, I can defend myself and I can stand up for myself, I wouldn't have even had to do that because my line brothers or my chapter brothers would have did it for me. Luckily, nothing like that had to happen, but I would have been okay. <clears throat> um, I guess I'll go next. So, like I said, I came out officially. Well, someone, I, you can watch my coming out story. Um, <laughs> so, I was already gay and masculine presenting when I came into Sigma. And I remember our first regional conference that we had was in like March. Um, and I remember getting like the two finger taps all the time because like I said, I'm masculine presenting. So a lot of my clothes, you know, they were suits. Um, I didn't go to any of the events where you had to like specifically wear a dress or anything like that. Cause I personally didn't feel comfortable. Um, and I mean, here's the thing. Let's be very clear. I love my SG row. I don't think there is anything. How do I say this? SG Row was the organization for me, period. I was never interested in anything else, no shade to anything else, but I do think that I never felt like I had to change who I was to be a woman of Sigma. I felt like Sigma complimented who I was very well because Yamani was already somebody. I was already prominent. I had clout. There was no, there was no pursuing this for attention, mm -hmm. for clout, for anything. I genuinely just wanted to do the work. But I will say this, you have a lot of old people in the organization, in all organizations that are kind of entrenched in what they believe. And sometimes what they believe is um, things that perpetuate misogyny and homophobia. And so for me, it was really difficult to be the person at these conferences that are introducing themselves with their gender pronouns and then having to explain what that means. It was really hard for me to be the person advocating for transgender women to come into the organization for women that um have transitioned and <clears throat> now identify as men i'm still advocating for them to stay in the organization and to be honest there have been instances where i have been very disappointed in how my organization um acts and i have no problem saying that because like it's no it's no shade it's no smoke none of that because that's how we learn that's how we grow that's how we get better by being able to call each other out on our bs and then teach so i try to use the educate not attack approach but i will say this there were a lot of instances where i felt uncomfortable and even a little bit disappointed um in some of the responses that my sororers had um to me advocating for people in this community or me wearing my homosexuality with pride and with enthusiasm and i would never i would never feel bad about that because like next but at the same time you have to be a very strong person to do this period like a lot of people will sell you you got to be a, a strong person to join no you have to be a strong person to stay to do it well and then if you're gay like girl that's a whole nother layer of strength that you need and i'm, I'm thankful that it was me you know, because I, I had the courage to do it. Um, and remember when I was telling y'all about like overcompensating and like doing a lot of work to get attention and stuff. Not to get attention, but to like push away like the gay. When I came into Sigma, I was doing a lot of work just because I cared, because I was passionate. I was winning awards, great grades the entire time. Um, internships, working full time, recruiting, going to programs, hosting events, being in events. Like I was, I was out. And I honestly believe that it's because it's so hard to be gay, it's so hard to be Greek, it's so hard to be black, but when you mix that together, it's impossible if you don't have the strength to do it. Mm -hmm. But we all do it well, you know? So hey, get you some money, next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, like I said, I am spring 19, so I am pretty young in it, so my now is still pretty current to when I cross. But, um... As far as my experience, my sayings, my profiles, my old heads, it was like I said, I was out when I came into Five Beta Sigma, so it was it was pretty accepted. 
and it is what it is. Like they said, well, like Rod said, if it was a comment, it wasn't directed towards me personally. Somebody might say something behind my back, but it was not directed. It's <laughs> not really respected. So I don't, <laughs> I don't really care because you know, there's that. But um, it just goes back to what I said, be you. And it is harder to be a part of the LGBT Q community and be denied. So do make sure that your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted because people are watching you 24 seven to make sure that you're on your shit. And if you're not, they will have a comment to make. Oh yeah. They looking for reasons. Literally <laughs> looking for a reason. So just be on your shit. See, that's why I always got a reason to come back at a bitch because <laughs> look, nonetheless, we ain't gotta argue. I'm gonna just let the resume speak for itself. Honestly, I'm sure that's you're miserable because right. you don't pay your dues. <laughs> you're and, inactive, but you want to talk about me because never mind. Keep it honestly. Keep it sis. So I feel like this is also very important, and this little subsection of this conversation is about how we recruit members and how do we treat members who are like us in the sense that they are also members of the LGBT community? Because this is a hardship that we've all faced. So how do we? How do we go about helping those, not beneath us, but helping those who are trying to do something that we've once done? Um, and I, I guess I'll just go first in this because it's something that I've seen three lines come through. I've seen members of the LGBT community try and be alphas. And I think that I personally handle this by being there for them. Um, I guess there's, there's nobody in my chapter besides me who knows what they're going through, especially those that are already out. Um, or the ones who are blatantly more, it's more obvious that they are members of the community, whether or not they want to admit it. Um, just being there for them, because I know that when you're joining these organizations, like I said in my previous video, people can be petty and people can say things and that can really get under your skin. And you have to be strong to join these organizations, but being strong doesn't mean that you can't accept help. Being strong doesn't mean that there's not somebody who's done it before you that could offer advice that could help you get through all of these hardships because no matter if you're gay, straight, bi, or whatever you want to call it, you're going to go through hardships. People are going to say things and people are going to throw the most targeted insults at you just to see how you're going to react. So I just make sure that when I see something in somebody or see that they could be members of my community that I'm there for them. Um, I let them know that if they need anything, especially pertaining to their sexuality, that they hit me up because if anybody could help them with it, I could. I did it while I was in, while I was a member of Alpha Alpha. I came out. I listened to the insults that people had. I listened to the shit that people was talk that people were talking about the LGBT community. I know I know what's coming. So with that being said, like I just make sure that I allow myself to be a resource for them. Yeah, and I advocate for my community all the time within my organization. I don't feel like anybody would ever disagree with me either. <laughs> yeah, I think the important thing is to open that door to make yourself a prominent ally. So one thing that I started doing was, of course, like I'm a stud, so like I'm masculine presenting, but I started using my gender pronouns more often. I started making sure that I was like, I tried to do more like keynote um, speaking events. I was in a pageant. Um, it was good. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I did all this like in masculine presenting dress because I wanted to first show two things. That women like me exist. We are just as smart as just as just as beautiful, just as important. Um and next I also wanted to make sure I was promoting SG Row. We small, so you know I had to, you know, get up there and say what I had to say. Yeah, you Um period. period. But um so yeah, I would say just I try to increase my visibility. Um I'm not really out here looking for members of the community to be in my org. And hold on, before y'all get to hate me, I'm saying, I don't care if you're straight, gay, on the spectrum, gender fluid, those don't matter to me as much as mm -hmm. who you are as an individual and what type of work you wanna do and if my organization is a good fit for you. Because just cause you're a stud and I'm a stud, that doesn't mean that you're GQ, that doesn't mean that you're an SG row. I'm sorry, but um, you know, and then that's kind, that's kind of it, you know, just support, show love, represent, and honestly help women gauge what organization is for them. I have plenty of mentees that look like me that have pursued other organizations and like that's good for them. I'm happy that they were able to be in that space in that other organization. It's no smoke. You don't have to do what's, what's, what's for me is what is for me and what's for you is for you because not everybody can pull this off how I pull this off. 
Period. <laughs> Okay, um, before I start, I do want to say something that I've heard and it stuck with me. If you can't join your organization grad chapter, then you shouldn't join your organization. Please don't make this a, I want to do undergraduate thing because I want to uh, be out and strolling and do yard shows and everything. You should be able to join your organization. Undergrad or grad chapter, it's really not a difference. Just put in the work. But as far as... Um, me, I, like your mommy said, I don't really look for you being LGBTQ. I don't care. It, it doesn't, it's not a factor for me whatsoever. If you are, okay, and I will support you through that with whatever you need for that. But as far as joining my org and my chapter, I just need you to work. <laughs> um, want to work. <laughs> know about my organization and the history that it's been founded on. And just show that you are actually going to be a great member of my chapter and my org because it's it's great to be a member of my org but it, it's different to be a member of somebody's chapter so yeah big you raise my baby right <laughs> he gets it okay dk that's <laughs> <Okay, period. laughs> uh Okay guys, so with all of that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really hope that you found some great information you can take it back to your experience. Whether you want to be Greek or not, um, I hope this video was informative. And I'm going to make sure that I link all of their social media information down below. Yamani has a channel. I put her on my community tab a few times, so make sure you guys check her out. She's um, funny as fuck. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to be doing another video for her channel like in a second. Um, and I'll probably post this tomorrow, which is December 15th, because, you know, I've got to post something every single day. Yeah, so if you're a member of the community and you're also a member of um, MPHC, tell us in the comments what you think about our suggestions and our advice. Yeah, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe, and... The post notifications. Hit those post notifications so that you know every time his ass posts, because he <laughs> says it in every video. Yes, Click exactly. that silver bell. Period. And if you have any questions, please like hit us up personally. Yeah. Please, please, personally. Yeah. It, like, personally, our social personally. medias will be in the description, so feel free to hit us up with any questions. It's a safe space. It's a Literally, brave space. Nobody will ever we want to help. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And with that being said, guys, peace be unto you. Bye. See you. <laughs> Boom.